Driven from their homes by armed invaders, a few hardy refugees faced the prospect of starting again. They would found a new village deep in the countryside. With a new settlement established, the first priority was locating a reliable food source. The simplest source was gathering from nature. Here's this. Yeah, that. I'm wearing. For Indy. Yeah, yeah. Meta. Yes. Gathwee. Gathwee yes. Indy. Lovely. With a healthy supply of food, the village could start to grow. To do so, it would need more hands to share the work. The new workforce could now turn to the growing village's needs. First, they would build a mill near their food source, so villagers could drop off gathered berries more easily. growing village would need wood to build with. Eat your para. 
Yes, Sammy and Dave. Gong and Dave. Yes, sir. Q and Dave. The growing community now had a steady supply of lumber. To make wood collection easier, villagers could erect a lumber camp near the forest. Thanks to the camp, villagers no longer needed to travel as far to drop off lumber. The village now required additional houses to support its growing population. With additional housing in place, even more villagers could join the workforce. But a populous village would soon exhaust the natural food sources. To grow, the community needed dedicated farms. Woodsmen and farmers now kept the village well supplied. Further growth required knowing the countryside and finding more resources. For that, communities employed scouts. To move quickly and see great distances, scouts were key to discovering new resources. The most important thing for a scout to locate was a ready source of gold. To prevent having to haul all large distances, expanding communities would establish a mining camp near the source of gold.
Yesa. Yesa. A well-placed camp ensured efficient gold mining. With a good supply of gold, the village was becoming yeah. a large town. Yes, sir. The signpost of this growth would be the construction of a large landmark. With the landmark in place, the once sleepy village announced itself as a thriving feudal township. The townsfolk had been driven from their homes before, however. This time, they would defend themselves. The first step would be constructing a barracks for infantry. Once it had a barracks, the town could establish a standing force of soldiers. Simple infantrymen armed with spears were a common choice for these militias. Garu upa, pura. 
Yarwe got him. Trimmer got him. Mid May. Yarwe. I went then they stay up. Yarwe. Eat your willa and your worker. Eat your worker. Yeah, eat your work. Got we got. Eat your willa down. Got we got now. Trim it, got him. I still have yes, got we got. Yeah, well, got we got now. Got him. Got him. Got him. Fed up. The town now had a militia and could look to reclaim the lands lost to invasion. Yeah, yeah. The invaders had blocked the road north with a stout palisade. Four Although road, spears road, were of little use against these walls, the militia could burn down the obstacle with torches. Tremet Garu. Yes. Garu Upa. Rit Nu. Now, Ishar. Forada here. Ridende Ut. Garwigan Asetta. Come at on. What hair, sir? Perende Nu. Tremet Garu. Furka Tiras. Undestrelum. Ridra Yaru. Donde tal. With the road open, the militia could now reclaim their lands in the north. First, the spearmen had to deal with a lone sentry. Mid-May. Advancing aggressively, the militia eliminated the enemy sentry. The invaders had a small cavalry camp guarding the road, but the militia was ready to attack. What hair, sir? Parende no! Foyende hessa! Ridende ut! Eyalu!
Garwigan has said that. It will. Forrada, here. Spears were highly effective against cavalry, allowing the militia to win the day. All that remained was to destroy the invaders' stables. The invaders' cavalry post was destroyed, but other enemy positions awaited further up the road. Hostile archers defended the next camp, which would put spearmen at a disadvantage. The township needed cavalry of its own to deal with this, and so would need to build stables. To deploy that cavalry quickly, the town needed to build their stables near the front lines. Fortunately, friendly villagers came out of hiding and joined the effort. With stables in place, the town could field horsemen of its own. now had a rapid light cavalry, skilled at harassing slower targets, such as archers. What yes, sir. West to Harla. Yes, sir. West to Harla. Eat your worker. Yes, sir. West to Harla. 
Yeah, when they off. Yeah, what got we? I still have got we on. Got to up mid May. Yaru to work. That Shule Bayo Timbran. What is it? It's Yara. It's your will, huh? Yes, sir. West to our grand they knew. Listers, Piras. eliminated the enemy archers and moved on to destroying the archery range itself. That shoulder be your temperate! The invaders' archers and their camp were destroyed. A final enemy emplacement remained, one fortified with palisades and defended by spearmen. To deal with this target, the town would need longbowmen. First, they needed to build archery ranges in the area regained from the invaders. What does it mean? It's Tembratheos! Once more, friendly villagers arrived to help. And your work, huh? Eat your work. Any With several archery ranges in place, the town could add longbowmen to its forces. Sir, it 
Timber Theos. Yes, sir. West Duhala. Yes, sir. Understood. Yes, sir. West Duhala. What, sir, face it? Gadrien de Hudu. Yes, sir. West Duhala. Yes, sir. West Duhala. A strong force of archers could eliminate enemy spearmen at a distance, so long as they took the proper position. Flamboga and odd. On move. Each of all Wolfgenge, Ale Samot. Poised on a cliff top, the longbowman would be protected from an infantry charge.
the last of the invaders fell to the resurgent homegrown population. Now that their lands were free of enemies, the town could take the next step in its growth and become a powerful medieval city. Here too, the erection of a great landmark would be the signpost of this growth. Where a few lowly refugees had founded a small village, now rose a mighty city. From there would grow an empire. 